I'm often asked, how should I take care of my sale? And the best practices for taking care of your sale, which will make it last longer, start with unrolling it. And what's important to know is that when the cloth is wrinkled or is flapping around, when you hear this crinkling noise, that is the sailcloth being damaged and the integrity of the sail being compromised. So how do we combat that? Well, one of the first things you want to do is when you're unrolling your sail, you want to make sure that your back is to the wind. If you're unrolling the sail with facing the wind, then the wind is going to blow the sail back at you. It's going to move all over the place. If the wind is coming from either your left or your right, the sail is going to want to flip. The sail is going to flap around, crinkle, the cloth is going to get damaged. So you want to make sure your back is to the wind. Second, if we unroll the sail from a high position, again, it's going to flap around. So we want to make sure that we're unrolling the sail low to the ground. So again, with our back to the wind and with the sail low to the ground. So remember, when you're unrolling your sail, reduce the amount of flapping, reduce the amount that the sail cloth crinkles, makes noise, because that is damage to the material. And that is the best practice for unrolling your sail. What is the best way to insert the mast into the sail without damaging the sail? You have more control if you keep the mast in two pieces. I know that some people like to put it in one piece before they put it in the sail, but I recommend keeping it in two pieces because you have more control over each piece. And like with unrolling the sail, we want to make sure that we're not crinkling the sail or creasing the sail and damaging the sail cloth. Uh, and so doing that, we want to keep the sail on the ground. We want to make sure that the sail is not moving very much. We insert the mast into the sleeve. Now it's very important when you're pushing on the mast and pulling on the sail, you don't want to be pulling from the pad. The pad is not designed to have that kind of load. So you want to always make sure that you're holding on to the tack of the sail, because the tack of the sail is designed to hold a lot of load. So again, make sure you're not holding on and pulling from the pad. And so you can stay low, get the tip of the mast in the top, and then we insert the second piece. And what I recommend is going down on one knee, holding the tack of the sail against your knee, and you can push the mast to the top of the sail. I see a lot of people who come to the boom cutout and they start moving the sail like this, but you hear that noise? That is the sail cloth being damaged. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep the sail flat and as uncreased as possible and that will extend the life of the sail. So I recommend staying at the foot of the sail Come down on one knee, put the tack on your knee, and push the mast, and you can rotate it. And then for the last part, because it's really important to make sure that the mast sets in the head cap, you can come up to the cutout, and pull just to get the last part of the mast in. You wanna make sure that the tip of the mast is fully set in the head cap. What we don't want is the mast to be not quite in the head cap uh, because then once you downhaul the sail, you can pop off the head cap and damage the sail. Uh, and it's, it's not safe to sail like that. Before we go further, we wanna make sure that our mast is connected. You know, when we're rigging with a two-piece mast, it's possible that in this process, the mast can become disconnected and you can have a little gap between the two pieces. Again, that is dangerous. It will compromise the mast, and the mast can possibly break like that. It's not designed to be partially connected, and also your sail won't rig properly. So what we do is we just come here and, and pull, and you can feel for 
the gap, if there is a gap, uh, we don't have one. Our mass now is completely together, and we can go to the downhaul. For setting the downhaul, I like to fold the pad up so that I've got space here where I can see what I'm doing. So I just fold the pad up. The amount of extension that's recommended is written on the sale, but this amount will be different depending on your extension, brand, and some other factors. Um, so we print a ruler on the tack strap so you can measure from the rigging gauge to the bottom of the extension to see roughly how much extension you need. So if you go from the maximum to the bottom of the gauge, that amount uh, of extension will be enough to go all the way up to the maximum downhaul. Put the extension in. We have our pulley that we design. This is our proprietary design for a pulley uh, because we wanted a pulley that did not have friction, internal friction. Uh, so this is, this is our design. That means that each uh, pulley is separated in the pulley block. So if you want to use the duotone extension or some other kind of extensions where you are using a loop, then uh, you need to use a D-ring on the sail. And the pulley is easy to remove. There's a, a little pin here that you just unwind it and take out the pin, and you can easily put in a D-ring. And the D-ring will work for those other kinds of extensions. Uh, where you want to have a loop going through the bottom of the sail. The best way to thread the pulley, if you have a perpendicular pulley block on your extension, so if you have a parallel pulley block, which means that the pulley block on your extension is the same direction as the pulley block on your sail, uh, which is the kind of uh, angle that you get, for example, with a streamline extension, then you just go from inside to outside. It's very easy to thread. For a more classic extension, like this Chinook extension I have here, we have a perpendicular pulley block. And so there's a special way to thread it, and we get a beautiful thread that is completely parallel and a dream to pull. And the way that I like to remember how to do it is we go inside, inside, under, under, outside, outside, over, over, through the middle to the cleat. So that's inside, inside, under, under, outside, outside, over, over, through the middle and to the cleat. I'll show you what I mean. So we go inside, inside, under, under, outside, outside, over, over. We go over, through the middle, and so we come under in the middle. Through the middle and to the cleat. And like that, we're left with a beautiful parallel thread with the two pulley blocks, and it's incredibly easy to pull. So, how do you set your downhaul? If you have the recommended Ezi mast, it is very simple to set your downhaul on any of the Ezi wave sails especially the Ezi Wave itself. The recommended mast is printed on the sail. So for this sail, a 4.2, we are recommended to use a 370 top and a 370 bottom, a complete 370 mast. Every sail, every Ezi sail is rigged in the factory and calibrated. That means the sail is rigged on a load cell that measures the force. And in that calibration process, not only are we checking to make sure the sail looks OK, we are putting a rigging gauge on the sail. Uh, and that is determined by a certain amount of force that puts the sail to a, a medium downhaul setting, and we, we set the gauge to that. So that means that if you have the recommended mast, as we have here, all you have to do is downhaul until the bottom of your mast lines up with the mark on the gauge for the amount of downhaul that you want. So for example, at the moment, we're between max and medium. If I want to go to medium, I just line it up so that the medium mark is on the bottom of the mass. And that is your medium downhaul setting. One of the questions I get asked frequently is, 
how do I know how much to set my extension? First of all, the amount of extension that you have does not affect the rigging gauge. What the amount of extension does affect is the distance from the bottom of your sail to the board. So if I have more extension, the bottom of my mass is going to be in the same place, but this part is going to be lower down. We're going to have a bigger gap between the tack pulley and the bottom of the extension and then therefore the board. So you can have too much extension and you'll still be able to rig your sail correctly. You might have the sail flying too high off the board than you would like. If you have too little extension, then you won't be able to get the bottom of the mast to line up with your desired mark. So again, the amount of extension you have does not affect the gauge's function. And as I already showed you, in order to predetermine the amount of extension you want, you can use the ruler that's on the tack strap. And that is how you set the downhaul on the Ezi Wave. It's really that simple. As long as you have the recommended Ezi mast, all you do is follow the gauge that is put on in the factory. If you lose your rigging gauge, don't despair. There is a mark on the sail for where the gauge was set in the factory. And that mark lines up with the medium line of the gauge. So if your gauge comes off, you lose it. To reset it, you simply line it up so that the medium line lines up with the mark that's on the sail. And that mark is put on the sail in the factory. When is this gauge not going to be accurate? The gauge is not going to be accurate if you change your head webbing. So for example, if you put your head cap out or in, then this gauge is no longer going to be accurate. If you're not using the recommended Ezi mast, this gauge is not going to be accurate as set by the factory. If your mast is not the right length, um, and mast length can change because the cap that's in the mast can compress. So we always recommend occasionally measuring your mast and making sure that it's within the certain tolerance, which is about half a centimeter, uh, because the, the cap that's in the top of your mast, which is plastic, can compress over time, and that can change the overall length of the mast, and that will affect then the gauge, or the, the plastic cap can come out a bit, so we always recommend measuring the mass and that the variance comes from that plastic cap that's at the top of your mass. But in general, you should be good to go. Now, what if you don't have the recommended Ezi mass? So maybe you're rigging with a different size Ezi mast or a different brand mast all together. There's a method you can use to set the gauge yourself. You only have to do this once. And from that point on, as long as you do using that same mast, then all you have to do is use the gauge as you've calibrated it yourself. This method is very easy. It only works though on the four batten wave sails. There's a different method for the five batten sails. So for this method, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have your sail with no boom on it. You bring the outhaul off. Make sure that the battens are set under the mast. And then what we're going to do is very slowly downhaul to the point where the foot batten just pops off the mast, to the point where the foot batten is just free from the mast. And that is going to be our medium setting. So we're going to downhaul very slowly until that happens. Just about there. So hopefully you can see that at this point, the, the foot batten is free, free from the mast. And we can line up our medium mark. With the bottom of the mast. And from now on, we can use this gauge with this mast with this sail even if it's a different brand mast, even if it's a different kind of Ezi mast. And you can see, because this sail was calibrated in the factory and we're using the recommended mast, doing this method, the medium line does line up with the line that was put on the sail in the factory. 
which makes sense. But if you're using a different mast, the gauge will possibly be in a different location. Uh, it's also important to recalibrate your sail if you change your head cap or do something else like change the plug in your mast that might affect the distances involved in the downhaul. All right, now that you have your sail calibrated and you know how the gauge works, now it's time to set your downhaul. I use the full range of the gauge. Don't be scared to go to max. Don't be scared to go to minimum two. Yes, most of the time I'm probably sailing around medium, probably sailing between min one and medium, but I will use the sail at max. I will use the sail at min two. Max is for strong winds for that sail. That is the maximum amount of downhaul you want to use on the sail. Min two is for extremely light winds. So minimum one is the main minimum for the sail, but sometimes you need a little bit of extra oomph, and that's what minimum two is for extreme light wind conditions. Again, I'm mostly sailing between medium and min one, but I use the full range of the gauge. The sail is designed to work at all points on this gauge for the downhaul. So don't be afraid to rig to max or to rig to min one or min two. The tack strap, I get a lot of questions because most other sail brands don't have a tack strap on their wave sails. Is it important? And the answer is yes, it is important. If it weren't important, it would not be on the sail. It makes a big difference to the performance of the sail. And so the tack strap is multi-purpose. It has the ruler for setting your extension lengths and for any other purpose you need a ruler for. It also ties up the sail. But most importantly, most importantly, it affects the performance of the sail. So when we put tension on the tack strap, it's doing a few things, puts some more shape in the foot, tightens the leech, and brings the sail into the mast and makes sure that the sail is not moving when a gust of wind comes. And what do all these things do when put together? They make the sail more stable, both in light wind conditions and in high wind conditions. So how do you set the tack strap? So you want to thread it, put it around the extension, and pull it as hard as you can. You want to see this wrinkle in the sail. So we really, really want to crank down on the tack strap. And then I, I straighten out the sail after that process to make sure that it's, it's more or less even here. But I still have a little bit of wrinkle. And then to wrap up the remaining tail from the tack strap, I put it through here between the extension and the sail under itself. And then on the back side, we've got Velcro so that the tack strap can stick and not get in the way while you're sailing. And I can't stress enough how important it is to tension the tack strap. I notice if I forget to tension the tack strap or I haven't tensioned it enough, the foot of my sail might start to flutter, the sail becomes less stable. I definitely notice it. It will improve the performance of your sail. You always want to crank down on the tack strap. Very important. What's the best thing to do with your excess rope? Well, we have a pocket here in the pad, so I just fold up the rope, stick it in the pocket, make sure it's really stuck in there, close the Velcro, and that's it. That's what I do with my rope. If you want a little bit of extra security, you can do one knot around the extension, but it's very easy to tie up the rope, knot it up, roll it up, and put it in the pocket that's in the pad. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, why do the numbers on my boom not match the numbers on my sail? And this is a question across sail brands, across boom brands. And there are a couple simple answers to explain it, actually. There is a reason that the numbers don't match. One is not every brand or manufacturer is measuring from the same place. So when we're measuring, we're measuring from the back of the grommet here on the clue to the front end of the mass. And that number is going to be different if you're measuring to the middle of the mass or to some other point. But the other reason that the numbers don't match, and this is possibly an even bigger reason, is that it depends where your boom is in the cutout. So if you have the boom at the top of the cutout versus the middle of the cutout, the length is going to be different. Does that make sense? You're going to need more extension if you're riding more extension on the boom. 
if you're riding the boom at the top of the cutout versus in the middle of the cutout. And that is, is one major reason why the numbers on your boom don't necessarily match the numbers on your sail. When we measure, we're measuring from the middle of the boom cutout. So again, if you're riding at the very bottom or the very top, the numbers on your boom are going to be different. And the numbers that we're putting on the sail are more of a guideline to help you make sure that you're in the right ballpark, to make sure you have the right kind of boom, but they are not a end-all, be-all guide to setting your outhaul. So how do you set the outhaul? Well, we have three different strings that are attached to the end of the sail, and these strings determine the amount of outhaul that you need. So the shortest string is for minimum winds, the medium string is for medium wind, the longest string is for strong wind. So if we want to have a medium setting, we gently pull on the string. We don't pull on it too much. We're not pulling the sail so it comes off the boom. Gently pull on the string and try to set that to the end of our boom. And the way you can think about it is this is the amount of all hull that you want for your medium setting. So we would set the boom, set the boom, make one hole out. And so we're going to come to about one finger's distance from the boom when we outhaul, and that will be our medium setting as determined by the strings. So crack it off, get a finger in there. That's going to be our medium setting as determined by the strings. If we wanted to go to the light wind setting, you know, we would release the outhaul completely. And we would see, okay, looks like I can put the boom in a hole. And it's still about one finger with the pole in. So I'm going to pull and leave about a finger space. And this is the minimum setting for the outhaul. When you're using the strings to set your outhaul, you want to make sure that you're holding your sail more or less neutral and that the battens are under or free from the mast. So you don't want them mismatched because that will change the amount that the sail will release towards the boom. Also, when you're adjusting your outhaul, you always want to think of adjusting your outhaul and your downhaul together. So for small adjustments, you can adjust just the outhaul, but for anything more than about a centimeter of adjustment, you want to adjust the outhaul and the downhaul together. It's important because they're both bending the mast and they're both moving the draft. As you're downhauling, you're moving your draft back. And as you're outhauling, you're moving the draft, which is the, the center of effort, the power of the sail, forward. And so in order to keep it balanced, everything in the same place, you want to make sure that you're always outhauling and downhauling together. The sail is not designed to have a lot of downhaul and only a little bit of outhaul or a lot of outhaul and only a little bit of downhaul. So you want to make sure that they're working together. Okay, so now you understand the downhaul gauges and the outhaul gauges. How do you use them? Every person is different. They've got a different weight, different personal preference, different board. And so what is a medium setting for me might not work in the same conditions as it does for you. And so what the gauges do is they provide a reference for you so that you know how to set the sail and you have consistent reference points so that you can always rig the sail in the way that you like it. What I recommend to people is once you've got your sail rigged, how you expect it to work well, go out and back and really pay attention to how the sail feels. And if it doesn't feel amazing, come back to the beach and make an adjustment. What adjustment do you make? Well, I've got a sort of four quadrant theory of how a sail should feel. First of all, if the sail feels unstable all over, you most likely need both more outhaul and more downhaul. If the sail 
feels like it's pulling too much on your backhand but is otherwise stable, you need more outhaul. If the sail feels like it's dead on the backhand, like there's no power, it's like you're opening and closing a door, then you need less outhaul. If the sail feels like it's pulling from above your head, then you need more downhaul. If the sail feels like it's bending too much and you don't have enough power and the sail is opening up too much, then you need less outhaul. And if you go out and back and you pay attention to how the sail feels with those sort of four factors in mind, you can always come back to the beach, make some small adjustments, and make sure that you have a perfectly tuned sail for the rest of your session. And it is really worth the two to five minutes that that takes to ensure that the rest of your session, the hour, two hour, three hours, is perfect. Uh, I will put those points in the description below this video so that you have a reference that you can go back to. You can print those out. And it, they're pretty easy once you get used to them. And it will ensure that you have a perfectly rigged sail and you have a great session. I get asked a lot, do I need to tension the battens? And the short answer is no. The longer answer is it depends. The battens are tuned in the factory. So like I've already said, every sail is rigged and calibrated and inspected in the factory. And during that process, the battens are tuned. So when you get the sail, it's ready to go on the water. That said, if the sail has been sitting in storage for a long time or you're buying the sail secondhand, it's possible that the battens do need to be tuned. And it's important to keep an eye on the battens in case some of the tension backs off and you need to apply more tension to them. Every sail comes with a batten key that's located here. in the pad. And this sail has the battens tuned already perfectly. If we want to adjust the battens, what we're going to do is hold the sail from the edge of the batten. And you just release tension until you start to see wrinkles that are perpendicular to the batten. And then you just apply tension until those wrinkles disappear, just until the point that those wrinkles disappear. And again, the sails are all tuned in the factory. So in most cases, you don't need to touch the battens on your sail. But it's good to know how to do in the event that you'd like to change the battens. Maybe you've bought a secondhand sail. Maybe the sails have been sitting for years in storage, and the battens need a tune-up. And so you've always got the key in the pocket of the pad, and you can do it yourself. I often get asked, do I need to rinse my sail? The answer is actually somewhat complicated. So the short answer is, if you're sailing in salt water, no, you don't need to rinse your sail. There's nothing that will corrode or grow on your sail if you're sailing in the ocean, sailing in salt water. However, with that said, the salt crystals can form on the sail when the salt water dries, and those crystals can abrade the film and they make micro scratches, which then make the film appear cloudy and less see-through. And so that is obviously negative for the sail. However, if you are rinsing your sail with fresh water, you want to make sure that the sail is dry before it's stored for an extended period of time because mold or other things can grow in the fresh water. But, and this is really important, you want to make sure that you're not drying your sail in the sunlight. Sunlight is the number one killer of sailcloth. So if you want to extend the life of your sail, keep it out of the sun. If you're not sailing, put your sail in the shade, de-rig it. Don't leave your sail lying on the beach in the sun for extended periods of time. Never dry your sail in the sun because that will greatly reduce the life of your sail. The easiest way to extend the life of your sail is simply keeping it out of the sun when not in use. Like with rigging the sail, we want to avoid damaging the sail cloth. And so to do that, we want to make sure that the sail is not flapping around, the sail is not wrinkling. So to remove the mass, we want to keep the sail flat on the ground. Again, these are best practices to make sure that your sail lasts as long as possible. We, a lot of work goes into making these sails, so we want to respect that craftsmanship. So we lie it flat on the ground, and one of the best methods for taking out the mast is to simply twist it, gently pull, twist the mast out, 
and the mask will start to come free from the luff sleeve. Just twist the mask. We'll come out and pull out the top section. And by keeping the sail flat on the ground and not wrinkling it, we're preserving the integrity of the sailcloth material. There are also best practices for rolling your sail. In general, we want to have as tight a roll as possible because that creates a strong cylinder that will help the sail preserve its shape in storage. So how do we do that? So we start with a tight roll at the top of the sail. And as we go down the sail, and again, we want to make sure the sail is not flapping around. We want to make sure our back is to the wind. We want to make sure the sail is not crinkling. As we go down the sail, we want to make sure our roll is parallel with the battens, and that ensures that we have a tight roll. So if we come to the batten and we're not parallel, what you do is you grab some of the sail that's here, pull it out until we're parallel with the batten, and continue rolling. You want to make sure that the luff sleeve is not folded. It's not folded in on itself. Everything is straight. And again, when we get to the next batten, we're going to pull to make sure that we're parallel. And then we can still make the sail tighter. So I stick my hand in the sail, grab onto the luff, and then with my other hand, I'm pulling and trying to get the sail as tight as I can. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Once the sail is nice and tight, I fold in the pad and I wrap the tack strap around and close it with the Velcro. And by having this tight roll, if there's any weight on the sail, the sail has more internal structure and it's not going to flatten and crease. If you're storing your sails vertically, you want to make sure that they're stored on the luff because this part of the sail is soft, can handle this kind of storage. What you don't want to do is store the sail on the clue because when this material compresses, this is the film and it will crease and it damages the material. So again, if you're storing your sails vertically, make sure you're storing them on the luff. If you're storing them horizontally, make sure that you have a tight roll and that you don't have any heavy objects on top of them because you don't want the sail to flatten and for the material to crease. The tighter the roll, the more integrity there is in the sail for storage. So we recommend rolling as tight as possible. Store your sails out of the sun and have fun on the water. Thank <laughs> you.